Good morning. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today. I'm excited to be here today to uh, share more about my Notion template video content management system. It's a system that I've been using for a few weeks now, and it's really been helping me to become uh, more consistent with video production and also um, just organizing my ideas and prioritizing them and figuring out which videos am I actually going to work on producing at any given moment. So I, I've started off sharing the screen. I hope that's okay. It's a little easier this way. And my plan is that I'm going to go through everything in terms of the uh, complete walkthrough and then um, be glad to answer any questions or comments uh, at the end. And um, there is a bit of latency to the feed. That was one of the lessons learned from my first uh, test live the other day was that you get better video quality if there's a bit of latency. So I might not see any comments uh, right away, but as I said, I'll, I will come back to any of those at the end. And then I just wanted to mention too that, um, you know, some of the links and tool, some of the tools I'm gonna to talk about today, I am an affiliate with uh, those uh, tools and companies. So if you bought anything through the, one of the links that I've listed in the description or shared, um, I might receive a small commission for that. Um, so just mention that at the top, and then uh, I'm going to also go, go over tips, tools, and resources that I use throughout the content creation process, and that I found helpful for me, and I, I hope you'll find them helpful as well. So let's dive in then, and, and we'll start talking about ideas. And uh, I'm sharing here the uh, short form videos in progress. This is what the template looks like, and you know some of the ideas that I'm working on right now and actually most of my ideas uh, don't start in the template they start in a notebook that I have that I keep with me and I write down ideas as soon as they come to me throughout the day and I find that that's actually one of the best ways to collect ideas for YouTube is to um, you know pay attention to things that are happening as a creator um, so, for example, I'm doing this live and uh, I'll probably do a piece of content at some point about tips that I learned from uh, doing my first live. So things like that. And that makes the content creation process a lot easier because you're talking about what you're actually working on as opposed to like working on stuff and then trying to come up with ideas separate from that. So that's um, one thing the other thing i try to do is i'm uh, coming up with ideas or writing them down in in the big list within the book is i try not to be too judgmental yet about what's the quality of the idea i, I look at it as more of a brainstorming process that you want to just um, you know write down every idea not not uh, filter them out too quickly um, because sometimes we judge our own ideas too quickly <coughs> And then they'd actually be a good idea if we put some more thought or work into them. Um, so I've probably collected over the first uh, year of, of doing this about 200 uh, different ideas. And the first filter is what do I take from my big list in the notebook and actually put into the template. And so that's really the first filter is... Um, what idea, what do I, and, and the first filter is what ideas do I think are good enough from the book to put into the template? Which, which ones do I <coughs> think initially has potential? And I would just write that down as a general idea. And then the second filter is the second column here, which I've called the vidIQ score. So uh, vidIQ is a software tool you can use to judge the competitiveness of a YouTube uh, idea and it assigns it a score from 1 to 100. I've removed the scores here because I don't want to share their data but um, you can you can uh, sign up with it. They do have a trial account um, and the other tool people use is TubeBuddy and it does a very similar thing. So I try to look for ideas that have a good competitiveness score. So the higher the score the better that is and what that means is that there's a high um, search <coughs> excuse me, a high search volume and low competition, and that'll give it a high score. So that's kind of the first filter because you want to look at ideas that have the greatest potential to reach an audience, and competitiveness score is one of the uh, factors in that. And the next couple of columns 
uh, are really the next um, filter that I would have for ideas, which is the title and the hook. And if I can come up with a good title and a good hook for a video, then I think, again, that's a video that has potential. If I've got an idea and I can't really craft a good title yet, or I don't know what the hook will be in terms of, you know, what am I going to say in the first three seconds of the video to capture attention, then I'd say that idea isn't ready for production yet. And so I'd set it aside. Um, so I, I think this is a really good additional filter to use for your YouTube um, ideas. And there's some tools you can use too to help you come up with better titles um, if you find that you're struggling that with that. So one of them is um, vidIQ again. It does title suggestions. But another one that I like is Creator Hooks. And Creator Hooks is a weekly newsletter you can sign up for free. And they email, uh, the, the creator there emails uh, title ideas, title formulas that you can use to um, adapt for your own titles. And they're titles based on things that are currently working on YouTube. So I think it's a really great resource. And um, another thing that people do sometimes is they'll use an AI software like ChatGPT or WriteSonic to suggest variations of a title. Um, and then you can adapt that and, and use which one you think is uh, going to work the best. And I also suggest, of course, just looking at YouTube and seeing which uh, kind of title formulas are doing well. And then so once you've got the title uh, coming up with the hook, now your hook for your videos, I think you want it to be similar to your title, but not exactly the same. So you don't want to have, <coughs> for example, a thumbnail that says create your create YouTube community posts uh, title that says that and, and, and you say that in your hook because it's too repetitive. So think of these as three opportunities to engage your viewer. Um, so with the title, uh, you could have something like create YouTube community post image polls the easy way with Canva. And so that gives a lot of information about what the video is about, but it's also kind of attracting their attention because you're talking about the easy way. And then in the hook, you say something slightly different. You say, you've got to try this approach to streamline the creation of your image polls for YouTube community posts. So that's an example of like how to build um, from your title to your hook. And I, I, I find the template is helpful for this because you, you're going to start out with the general idea. You're going to find out which, okay, which videos um, are most going to work in terms of the competitiveness score. And then you're going to go over and you'll have time to work on the titles and the hooks before you get to the filming, before you get to the production process. And you can, the more that you give yourself the opportunity to plan that out by having multiple ideas on the go at the same time and, you know, time to reflect on it, time to incorporate ideas from all the different sources that you've, uh, that we've talked about, the better your uh, videos are going to be because you have a chance to improve um, all of those elements more rather than, let's say, um, if I think about the old way that I was producing videos before, I would try and do the whole thing from end to end. So I'd start out with my idea, I'd immediately come up with a title, I'd come up with the hook and the script right away, um, and then I'd film it. And there was like very little in between time. Uh, for any of those things. And so this is why I think uh, a tool like this could be really helpful because you start thinking about all of those things ahead of time and you give yourself that time to reflect on um, what you're doing and continually improve it as you're going along. So one thing uh, I didn't mention uh, too much there was thumbnails and I'll have to switch to the long form um, template. And, and I'll just mention that the system um, it includes a template for long form videos in progress as well as short form videos. And I like to keep them separate because I think they're kind of um, different in the approach. And there's also some differences in um, what you need to think about. So for example, um, you don't need thumbnail ideas for your shorts because you don't uh, typically add uh, thumbnails for that. 
But here, the, again, thumbnail is something that uh, would often be an afterthought, right? You've created the whole video, you've taken all this time to produce it, and now you're going to think about the thumbnail right at the end, just minutes before you post the video. It's probably not going to lead to the best quality thumbnail. And so again, this is where this kind of template is helpful because um, you think about, okay, what what's it going to be? A photo of me with a mic and a live button or photo of your guest um, with a blogging graphic, kind of conceptualize it. Um, and you can go into more detail sometimes like I did with this one um, with Matthew Hughes, maybe I'll have a money symbol and uh, simple text like make it rain because he talks about uh, YouTube monetization. So just different things um, you can think about ahead of time, again, to make your thumbnail as good as it can be. Uh, by the time you post the video and so i also have added a couple of ca categories here for both templates which is video category and content pillar and the reason for the video category if i can show you the properties here is just like what are the types of videos that i long form videos that i make and you can certainly adapt these if you make other kinds of videos um, for example, I might add uh, a live button here now, now that I'm doing some lives, but podcast, a short long form or short vlog um, would be the category. And then I just keep track of that to give a, a check on like, am I going overboard in any category or am I missing out on an opportunity and try and have um, some variety for the audience, right? So if you're, uh, unless your intent is to do all short long form, you can kind of, um, slip into doing mostly that and then you can you know maybe you forget about oh yeah keep the podcast going or maybe i should do a longer video uh this this just kind of gives you a sense of where um where the effort's going and you can also then look at the results so um if you've done a lot of short long form for example but they're not doing very well and your podcast episodes are doing well that gives you some information you can use uh, to recalibrate what you're doing and then content pillars, I recommend keeping these very simple, not more than um, four or five, because your content pillars is a categorization of what are the common topics that you talk about. So if you have um, like 15 of those, uh, people are going to come to your channel and they're not going to know what, what is this channel about really. Um, so try and keep it fairly tight so that, you know, when you attract a viewer, uh, who's interested in social media strategy, they're going to see, okay, there's a lot of videos about that and also related topics, and they'll be more likely to become a subscriber, or at least come back and watch other videos. Whereas if you have a lot of them, and I probably in this case have too many of them in my shorts um, example here, I've got uh, quite a few pillars there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five about eight or so. So I might want to look at, you know, can I can I narrow that down a little bit and keep the topics consistent because that's going to give you the best, again, the best opportunity for being successful. So then we're, we're almost at the point where um, we've, we've figured out the title, the thumbnail, the hook, um, the idea, and we're re and what category uh, and pillar the video goes into we're, we're almost ready to go into scripting and production which of course is the part of the process that takes the longest so there's a few things that go with that one is that um, i will try to i will apply one final filter to which ideas get produced so i think about things like okay what's my motivation to make this video uh kind of reflect back on that because uh, if you're not excited about it as the creator there's probably a lot less chance that your audience is going to be excited about it i think about the time required to make it some some videos you're going to be able to make quickly others you know are going to require more work and so if you're you're trying to have a consistent video flow you want to plan it out so that you're doing some quick ones and some longer ones that you're working on the background and that is, again, where a tool like this is very helpful because you get a sense of like, OK, these are the ones I can produce quickly. I'll do a few of those and maybe bank them. And then I'm going to work on this other one that is going to take me longer. And, um, you know, so I'll kind of work on that over time in the background. And then again, thinking about what we're saying with audience um, 
expectations uh what what did they what kind of topics align with the audience what kind of video categories um can i use to keep things fresh so not just all tips not just all tools kind of what what else could we post about technology strategy what have you keep things interesting for uh, the audience so then when we get the idea and we go into this longer period of uh or the, these these uh i guess harder tasks of of scripting filming and editing the videos again i, I find the tool can be kind of helpful because you can look at things and and say well i was able to do 50 percent of the script today um and these are tasks that uh, often can't be done in one sitting. So I find it is helpful to just have a um, opportunity to say like, okay, I've done this much. Because otherwise what happens is you are working on a, a big project, like a long form video over multiple sessions, but you're, um, it feels like you're not getting anything done. Because it's like, well, I worked on the script, but I didn't complete the script today. This kind of gives you the opportunity uh, to go in and at least check this box and say 50% is is done now. And I don't I don't know about yourself, but psychologically, I find this uh, helpful. I find it um, a way to maintain motivation over long projects is to be able to um, at least, uh, you know, show some progress. If, if it's only in your template, that's okay. Uh, but you know about it and you know that uh, the video is getting closer to completion. And actually, I, I think it helps to create the momentum to keep the project going. And so for scripting, um, we talked a little about hooks, but you, you need to think about the script as a whole to, uh, to retain your uh, viewer's attention. Um, so, so scripting or, or the hook is the first part, you know, the first few seconds, did you deliver on the promise of the title? Now you've got the viewer's attention. How do you create um, a script that's compelling? And I think it's uh, you, what you want to look at here are um, different storytelling techniques. And I put a link in the description to a, uh, a link that'll go to like 27 copywriting formulas. And each of these copywriting formulas can be adapted to be used as a, as a basis for your script, as a way to craft the outline. Um, the other thing, of course, you can use are uh, tools like Write Sonic or ChatGPT. I don't recommend um, creating a script from that and then just using that. I think that um, it's not going to be original enough. It's not going to be um, good enough, frankly, to um, you know to, to to help your channel. And uh, at some point, I think. Um, Google and YouTube are going to more heavily penalize uh, what they detect as AI generated content. Um, I think they'll have to, or otherwise the platform will just become flooded with it. And, you know, people won't be able to actually connect with people through, uh, through this medium. So I, I think, um, you know, use it again as a source of inspiration. And in fact, what I like to do when I'm creating a script is use multiple sources of inspiration. So I use my experience as a writer. I might get some ideas in terms of the general um, outline from something like uh, Write Sonic. And then I might also look at um, concepts and approaches that other YouTubers have used in their videos. And kind of all that goes in and, and gets mixed around and um, the other part is to infuse it with your own experience and that's another reason why i really like talking about stuff that i'm doing as a creator is it kind of it almost helps the content write itself you've got uh if i go back to the live experience you've got this experience of doing lives you've learned things through doing that um, and you can share that and just how do you, how do you craft the story about it well that's where you look for those other sources of inspirations to um, help you craft the story in a compelling way and so as i go along and i i usually am able to write like maybe a quarter of the script at a time and then over a few days we'll get to the point where it's done and so then we'll move on to filming and filming is another part of the process that does uh, take a long time and it kind of gets back to that um, point about you know carefully filtering what ideas are you actually working on are you investing that time in creating um 
because you know once it gets to the f the filming stage you're you're really into it and you want to kind of carry the project through to completion once it gets that far and again a good way to maintain that forward momentum is to check off a bit as you're going and then in terms of tools that can help um with filming uh you know, I, I use um, my iPhone and I use the DJI Action Cam for most of the filming that I do. Um, the DJI Action Cam is better uh, for 16 by 9 uh, filming. The, the challenge with it, though, is that it does tend to overheat if you have it, if you're using it for more than 10, 15 minutes at a stretch, which is why I got a new tool I'm going to be uh, doing a video about soon, which is a camcorder. And the camcorder is a little better for um, filming for longer periods of time. The action cam is still good for uh, portability and doing like point of view shots because you can uh, hang it around your neck and uh, it can show point of view. And then you could use something like the camcorder to do the locked off shots, um, just set up on a tripod or what have you and, and record that way. Um, and you can also use your phone um, and then the last uh, kind of tool that I'm uh, working with now to help with filming is a teleprompter. Um, and, and I'll say that it's harder to use than it looks. <laughs> I thought using a teleprompter would be easy, but actually uh, by the time that you uh, take some time to set up and it has to be really aligned uh, pretty much perfectly. Um, or it's going to look like you're reading from the teleprompter. Um, and, and I think it's a skill to, to kind of like just check the words, look at them if you need to be reminded of stuff, but not actually read them even though they're there scrolling right in front of you. So it, it does take a bit of practice. I'm, I'm not convinced yet if it's, if it's going to improve efficiency or not, but I'm going to keep working at it. But um, I think that all those other tools are, are good. And um at, you know, at the end of the day, um, like filming is something that does come down to practice and experience. You can watch a lot of videos about a theory of filming, and those are helpful for thinking about, like, how do you set up different shots to create suspense or to create visual interest? But at the end of the day, you really have to go out there and film, and um, that's how you get better at it uh, over time, because there's so many little things that you won't pick up through the theory. Um, so you work through that, we get through the filming, and we come to editing. Again, something that I like to uh, parse out, because um, it often can't be done in one sitting. Uh, Most of you know um, editing, if, especially if you're trying to add a lot to your videos in terms of effects, in terms of like improving uh, the quality of the visual experience through transitions, through motion graphics, all that takes some time. I like to do it sequentially. Um, you know, I've tried it both ways where I've I've tried like setting up all of the shots and then you add all of the transitions and then you add like all of the motion graphics. Um, I kind of, I don't find that that works for me as well. I find that I just, I don't know, um, work better if I do it piece by piece. And then I, I feel like it's progressing forward, number one. And number two, you you have you do have that opportunity to go back afterwards, and if there's something you want to improve within the whole thing, you can you can do that later. But I find that you know, for example, um, if you set up all the shots to begin with, and then you get into the process of adding um, you know stock footage or what have you, you realize oh I want to replace that anyways, and then you know it it, it actually I think takes longer. Um, that way so uh, it depends on how you like to work um, so for editing I use InShot for mobile or I use Filmora or InVideo for desktop I find Filmora is better if you have a lot of different effects that you want to add to the video you can do more with it but InVideo is probably a bit faster the um, you know the tool just works more quickly on the computer and that lets you move through things faster you, it also has quite a extensive library of stock footage right embedded within the program so it's very easy to import it over and then you know add some uh, different things to it so i think that there's a lot of um, you know value in in that uh, th th those kind of tools um, 
and they're beginner friendly too so you can uh, produce results fairly quickly which is the other thing i like about them and so when i'm editing the thing i try and think about is retention um, how do you change things up every you know 10 to 20 seconds either with the use of motion graphics or transitions or putting in some stock footage ideally try and find stock footage that matches um, the uh, you know your content and that's why increasingly i like to shoot try and shoot more of my own stock footage or it's something i'm going to do more in the future but um, the other thing about stock footage is just being careful about what uh, company that you're using if you are getting uh, stock footage um, so for example some of the free stock footage sites um, there's so many people uploading uh, footage there you can't always be sure if it's uh, if it's their footage and and that's why I like using more of a paid um, tool like Storyblocks because um, you you know with Storyblocks it's it's pretty much guaranteed that anything that they have is going to be um, uh, copyright or, or um, not going to run into the copyright issues and if you do there's a process whereby the, they'll um, you know you, you have some support in the sense that you could show them the license from you can show YouTube the license from Storyblocks and prove that you did have the um, you know the rights to post that stock footage so uh, you, you want to do what you can in in that respect to avoid any kind of copyright strikes because those really hurt your channel and then last uh, couple of columns here, captions and description. Um, I find, again, the captions uh, for the video, you want to uh, work through those. For longer videos, uh, those sometimes take time. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, it's an important feature to work through for accessibility of your videos. It can help them reach a wider audience. And also, of course, with mobile, um, most users will watch with the sound off. So if you don't have captions, um, they're, they're more likely to just fl flip to the next video, find one with captions that they can watch comfortably with the sound off. So that's an important reason to keep captions in your video. And then for your podcast, um, having captions or a transcript is useful for the uh, page CEO. If you have your own podcast page, you publish the transcripts, all of those transcripts containing all of those keywords get imported over into your podcast page. So that makes it helpful for um, search engine optimization of your, your podcast uh, website. Uh, another good reason for doing it. And the, the tool I use for that is called Descript. And, you know, no tool is, uh, is going to be perfect in terms of um, the how the captions come out through the uh, process of when it's being uh, recorded or transcribed so you do have to go back and make those tweaks and that's why I've kind of added this column here so you remember to do that and then the description is another one of those things that gets left to the very end right before we're ready to post our video we start thinking about oh yeah what description am I going to add for the video and I think that's a missed opportunity so uh, it's a good thing to work on uh, a little sooner or start thinking about a little sooner um, because your description is a great uh, way to create search engine optimization for your videos. Longer descriptions, you know, make sure you add things like chapter titles. Make sure you've got uh, keywords in there that relate to the video. Um, add hashtags for the video. All of that that can, you know, continue to um, improve the quality of the description. Help your video get found and really just, um, you know, help, help your channel overall. So then um, you've, you've got that all uh, ready. You've um, written a description. You've optimized it for CEO. Uh, you're, you've published the video, but uh, your job here still isn't done as a creator. And uh, that's why the, um, the uh, uh, template goes on. And I think this is actually a very important part of the template here is the second part is to think about You've invested all of this effort in creating your YouTube video. Um, what are you going to do to uh, help promote it? And so when I uh, get to this point, I've got it set up. So you click publish and that'll immediately take the uh, idea down to the bottom of the uh, page. And so now you can scroll down 
and see um, all of these videos that you've created and that have been published and now they're sorted separately so you don't get them mixed in with the ones you're working on where have you promoted them um, and so for the ones I have here I've got some examples where I've reposted them to Instagram reposted a few to TikTok, and now I know okay um, if I don't want to miss the opportunity to get those out wider I should consider that um, I added a column for threads now that that's out there um, and then with Twitter and community posts I've set it up as a numeric system because you probably could do you know more than one tweet uh, pertaining to your video or more than one community post so here's one where I did a couple for example and then you can think about is this um, video can I create it as a blog post um, can I make it into an uh, Instagram carousel uh, can I promote it to print Pinterest uh, so all of those are um, options and I find it helpful to track this within the template because what I was I was finding uh, happening was that you would I'd create the videos and then I'd immediately move on to working on the next video and it kind of only half-heartedly promote the ones that I'd created because I'm too busy creating new stuff right and this is a good reminder uh, to go back and you can see I still have have some work to do here in terms of the uh, promotions and repurposing but I'm getting a little better with it and I mean there's there's really no reason not to and I used to be of the mind that um, one of the reasons I was slower at uh, repurposing was I, I was of the mind that you wanted to um, mix things up on different channels different platforms so that people weren't seeing the same thing all the time and uh, since I was doing, uh, I did two of my podcast episodes with other creators where they, they changed my mind about that. And so if you go back and see the uh, episode with Megan Gersh or Charles Tumiato, we talk about that. And they, they both really um, convinced me that, um, you know, you should just repost everything everywhere at the time when you produce it um, or do it as as much as you can Um because you really realistically have different audiences on different platforms and just um, systematically it's easier to manage that way it's I think that's where it falls off sometimes where you, where you say well I'm going to repost that somewhere else later but you you will forget about it even with the template so think about how you can um, you know repurpose it to the maximum places at the time when you produce it and then move on to the next piece and you know, if you, let's say you uh, miss out on threads, the template's still helpful here. You can, if you're stuck for some content one day, uh, go back to the template and consult it uh, for where you haven't, you know, where you might have a missed opportunity. And then that can be an easy content idea. The other thing I, I will say here with um, repurposing is it's probably helpful to get some kind of repurposing tool, some kind of single interface because, um, just like you've got a single interface here with this template to uh, you know, track everything, uh, it's nice to have a single template to interact with the different platforms. So I'm, I haven't checked it out yet, but I've heard of Metricool, and I think it might be one that I'm going to be looking at in the next few weeks um, as that kind of single platform to integrate um, all of your content and and put it out on on different platforms without having to really um, switch between them the other nice thing i heard about metricool is that you can manage comments in one place so um, for example if, if you have a piece of content you put out to like uh, twitter uh, instagram and TikTok, um, all the comments will be fed back to that platform and you can uh, that that you're getting and you can reply in the one place which is really I think helpful and so I, I hope you found this uh, helpful I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there and see if there are any questions um, hello Eileen uh, thanks for joining and uh, thanks that uh, you, the YouTube captions are great I appreciate that and uh, yeah I've I found that um, you know, having the time to uh, to think through things and work on multiple pieces at once um, has been really helpful. And so, I, 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 but to do that, I think you need a tool like this where you can actually uh, track things um, 
that you're producing and then you can can keep kind of iterating on them keep working on them um, and that um, also helps with the consistency and as checking things off as you're doing them is helpful too as I was saying like if you're able to um, go into your videos and uh, as you're filming say again you got 25 you got 50 percent done you keep that forward momentum going you also have a top level view of where different things are at so like I was saying uh, earlier you know you've got some that are quick to produce and some that are longer for the longer ones you have a sense of where you're at and so that if you want to bring that to a conclusion on a certain timetable you know what you need to do and that that for me is important with the podcast episodes because i'm trying to be consistent in uh, doing one of those every three or four weeks so but those ones take um you know multiple sessions to complete and have to know where they're at in order to um, be able to complete them uh, the alternative is again you try and do each video uh, from end to end and so you drop everything to work on the one and um, then you're kind of like in terms of your content flow you kind of disappear from the platform for two or three weeks while you're doing this bigger piece and then all of a sudden you reappear do a bunch of shorter ones and it's it's just not ideal it's not optimal um, so that's part of the uh, I guess the challenge the tool like this is is designed to solve and it, it is free um, if you go to uh, my freebies on the uh, web link and you go to Gumroad um, it might uh, it'll ask you for a dollar amount but you can enter zero and just download it for free and I created it frankly for myself to help uh, me with um, video production but I thought it would be helpful to other creators and uh, so I, I just put it out there and I hope um, you find it helpful as well and if you did really appreciate um, you know uh, the time you spent with me today um, appreciate uh, you know if you if you leave a like or uh, any comments and um, subscribe to the channel uh, for more and thanks very much for spending some time with me today I hope you have a great day for the rest of your Monday thanks everyone <laughs>